In this video, I'm going to be talking about rendering fur and hair, which seems to be something that a lot of people struggle with, but it's actually really simple. There's hardly any settings that you need to think about when you're dealing with hair and fur. But the problem I think a lot of people have is that if you have um, a blank modo scene and everything's a default setting and you just add some hair or fur to a character and you hit render, the results are going to be noisy. And the reason for this is that um, Modo's default settings are really geared towards speed. I always like to think of them as draft quality settings, if you like. Um, and actually, they're really clever because if you have your default state for rendering in Modo, you're always going to get fast renders. And that's exactly how you want things to be, because then you go in and only increase the quality settings that you need to increase. But I think what happens in a lot of cases with people maybe who aren't that experienced with a render engine and don't know exactly which settings to change to uh, get the results they're looking for is that they'll go in and blindly sort of turn everything up to 11 and then wonder why their renders are really long. And if they've not actually targeted the right settings, they're probably still noisy as well. So the issue with hair is essentially one of anti-aliasing. So I've got this... Uh, really simple setup here the the old man from the standard content with a really simple hairstyle it's actually adapted from another file from the standard content and uh, i've just got a couple of lights um an area light just to give some sort of specular reflections and a directional light to give the overall lighting to the scene and i just like to talk very quickly about how it's all set up so um one of the limitations of fur in Modo is that it doesn't allow you to have multi-layered fur on the same mesh. So in order to have multi-layered fur on this character, I've actually got two scalp meshes going on here. I just quickly turn off the hair material so that uh, it hides the hair guides in the viewport. And you can see basically I've simply got these two scalp materials, lower and upper, which are parented to the head. So let me just quickly turn them back on so that the hair renders again and shows in the viewport. And what I'll do is I'll go to the item list and turn off the upper scalp layer. And I'll unpause preview so we can have a look at what this lower scalp layer is doing. And if I select the fur material itself in the shader tree, we can have a look at the settings. Essentially, it's just a very dense but very short layer of covering fur at the base of the skull. And the important thing here is in the fur properties, I've got the segment set to just two. And that's in order to try and keep the geometry as light as possible, especially as the fur on this layer is so dense. So now I'm going to re-enable the upper scalp and hide the lower scalp and unpause preview. And we can compare how this layer of fur is different to the one below it. And you can see that on this topmost layer, we've got specular highlights, which we didn't have on the layer below. And also there's gaps in between the hairs and you can see the scalp underneath. And the reason for these gaps is simply that the hair is less dense on this topmost layer than it was below. On the layer below, I set my spacing to 500 UM, whereas on the top layer, my spacing is set to one millimeter, which means that overall, the hair is only half as dense on this layer as it is on the other one. And again, this is simply done to try and optimize uh, the amount of hairs and the amount of geometry that's going to be generated at render time because the more geometry you have to generate the longer your renders are going to be so uh, one final thing i'd like to point out is that i've set my max segments here to 20 and that means that even if we get really close to the hair we're not going to see any breaks in the curves so i'm just going to re-enable the lower scalp and you can see that basically we need the two layers to work together in order to give us a nicely optimized head of hair on this character so I'm just going to pause preview now and with everything set at default, I'm going to do a test render. And here is the render and you can see it's very noisy. And as I said earlier, that's simply because we're using the default settings. We're going to need to increase the anti-aliasing quality to get rid of all this noise. You can see there's all sorts of noise all over the hair. So I'm going to return to the scene and the first thing I'm going to do is select the render item, go to settings and I'm going to increase the anti-aliasing samples to 256 samples per pixel and do another test render. And here is the completed render. Now this render has taken one minute, whereas the previous one took 30 seconds. So we've doubled our render time. And at first glance, you might actually think we don't have much of an improvement. But if I zoom in and we concentrate on the top part of the hair, 
You can see that the latest render certainly does have visibly less noise when I compare it with the previous one. However, this area here with the uh, specular highlight, this doesn't seem to have improved much at all. It's still very noisy. And I think this is one of the things that really trips people up. They think, well, hang on, I've just increased my anti-aliasing by a factor of eight, and yet my render is still really noisy. So what's going on here? Well, you have to remember that Modo uses this concept of the shading rate. So what happened when I increased the global anti-aliasing is that this helped us with the geometric anti-aliasing between the individual strands of hair, but it didn't really affect the shading and the specular highlight forms part of the shading equation. Now this is being limited by the base shader that has a shading rate of just one. So on the actual surface of the hair, we're still only firing one sample per pixel. So it's as if we never actually increase the anti-aliasing on the surface of the hair at all. So I'm going to return to the scene and I'm going to drag my scalp upper material above the base shader and I'm going to add a shader to that group and I'm going to set the shading rate on that shader to zero which means that the global anti-aliasing setting is going to control the sampling quality on the surface of the hair. I'll just pause the video while I do a test render. And here is the render. Now it's only taken 11 seconds more than the previous render you can see there's a marked improvement in the highlights. There's still some noise, but it's definitely a lot cleaner than it was. Now one benefit of setting my shading rate to zero is I don't have to go and fiddle in two places in order to increase the quality settings for my hair. I can just control everything with the global anti-aliasing settings. And since my hair is what's going to require the most AA samples, that kind of makes sense. I can still use the shading rate in other materials to limit the sampling in those, but I don't want my hair sampling to be limited at all. I want to use the global anti-aliasing to control that. However, since my global AA is now set at 256 samples, I don't really want to increase it anymore because there's a more effective way of cleaning up the hair at this stage, and that's to use frame passes. Now, frame passes have been useful for cleaning up hair in Modo for quite a long time now. However, it used to be a very wasteful uh, way to do it because it would only affect hair and motion blur. However, since the last couple of versions of Modo, frame passes will also smooth out GI noise and anti-aliasing, so it's become much more useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my frame passes to two, and I'm going to pause the video while I do another test render. And here is the render with two frame passes. Now obviously my render time has doubled because each time I add an additional frame pass it's going to re-render the entire frame from start to finish. So two frame passes is going to take twice as long as one frame pass. Three frame passes is going to take three times longer than one frame pass. Um, but if we compare the smoothness of the render to the previous one you can see that it is indeed much better and I'll zoom in so you can see that the hair is now much, much softer. So frame passes are an essential tool in Modo for softening hair, and you're going to find that if you're rendering hair or fur, you're usually going to need at least two frame passes in order to get decent results. So you can see that getting noise-free hair in Modo isn't particularly complicated. There's only three things you need to know. First of all, the shading rate. And when dealing with hair, I tend to always set it to zero because that means I can just control it directly with a global anti-aliasing setting. And then next, obviously, is the global anti-aliasing. And finally, the frame passes. And with a combination of these three settings together, you can get smooth, noise-free hair. And you can see that even at 1280 by 720, our render time is still just two minutes and 22 seconds. So it's not particularly slow to render either. In the previous example, I was using Modo's standard fur material to generate the hair. However, there's also a hair material, which you can find here under Add Layer Custom Materials, Hair Material. Now this has to be used in conjunction with the fur material because the fur material is still needed to generate the actual fur. But what the hair material will do is provide some more advanced shading. So in order to make some comparisons, I've got the uh, fur material set up here. And I've done a render just using uh, pretty standard settings, just 32 AA samples and one frame pass for now. And uh, I'm going to enable the hair material that I've got here on my two hair layers in the shader tree. And I'll just unpause preview. You can see it looks fairly similar, though it's not possible to exactly match the look between the fur and the hair because they do render slightly differently. But with this, uh, now enabled, I'm going to do a test render so we can see how it compares visually and in terms of render time as well. 
And here is a completed render. Now if we compare the render times, you can see that it's taken twice as long as the previous render, which was using hair rather than fur. But the other thing that immediately jumps out is the fact that the latest render using hair is actually a lot cleaner, especially in the highlights. The highlights in the fur are very noisy and we know that we need a lot of anti-aliasing samples in order to clean them up. Now here, when we're using only 32 AA samples, we've got pretty clean highlights, although there is some noise here in the top part of the hair. So how do we clean up the noise that's in the top part of the hair? Well, the first thing I want to try is to increase the anti-aliasing samples to 256 samples per pixel and do a test render to see what that does in terms of noise and render times. And here is the completed render and it's coming at just under four minutes. And if I zoom in and compare it with the previous render, you can see that it is indeed much cleaner. There is a little bit of noise left, but at normal magnification really isn't visible. Now the great thing about this is we managed to get these results with only one pass as opposed to using two passes with a fur material. So the thing really to do is to try and compare render times between a clean hair render and a clean fur render. So I'm going to return to the scene and I'm going to disable the hair material and I'm going to go to my frame passes and set them to two and uh, I'm going to see if a render using the fur with two frame passes and 256 AA samples comes in as clean as the render that I've just done using hair. And here is the completed render. And if I zoom in and compare it with the previous render, you can see that in terms of noise, well, they've both got pros and cons about them. I would say the render using hair has definitely got cleaner highlights, but there's more noise in the shadows, which you can see up here, which the render with fur doesn't have so much of. So they're pretty much tied, I would say. But one thing to notice is that the render time here with fur is only just over three minutes, whereas with hair has come at just under four minutes. So you can see that using hair, even though it's only using one frame pass rather than two, is a little bit slower. And so the upshot is that there aren't really any straightforward answers as to whether you should use the fur material or the hair material, because they both have their pros and cons. The hair material is pretty easy in terms of settings. You really just need to think about the shading rate, and I generally just set it to zero, and then the global anti-aliasing samples. And you can see that by setting 256 samples in this particular scene, we've managed to get results that are certainly clean enough for production use. Now, using the fur instead of the hair um, gives us better render times, but it adds this extra complication of having to use extra frame passes and depending on your scene, this could also be pretty costly. Now you can use the extra frame passes to clean up other aspects of your scene, which is a great thing about them, but you could find that in some scenes they're really inefficient. So you might find that then you have to isolate your hair in a separate pass and it just creates a much more complicated workflow, which you really don't have when using the hair material because you can just use one pass and just use your AA settings to control the quality. But the price you pay for using the hair shader is simply extra render time. It does take longer to render. And if you have a character with long hair, you'll probably find that your per frame render times are going to be very long. One thing that does have to be said in favor of using the hair shader is you have a lot of control over the highlights. If we look at the shader itself, you've got this uh, primary color setting and this secondary color. Now, if I open the render window and we look at the uh, actual render, the primary color is this wide highlight here, this bright highlight you've got here, and you can control the exact color of this highlight as well as, as its width. And the secondary color is this fainter highlight that you've got here. You can see it's a slightly lighter brown than, than what's behind it, and that is controlled by the secondary color. And once again, we can control the color and the width of this highlight. So basically the settings on the shader give us much finer control over the look of the hair than what we get using the fur shader. Another layer of control that you have with a hair shader, which you don't get with the fur material, is how it responds to backlighting. So if I return to the scene, I've got a spotlight that I've added to uh, the scene just behind the camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable it and I'm going to unpause my preview. And this is with the fur material enabled, not the hair material. And you can see as preview refreshes, not much happens. But just wait to see what happens when I enable the hair material instead. Straight away, you can see in preview, this really nice sort of backlit highlight has appeared on the surface of the hair.
Now you've got quite a lot of control over the look of um, the backlighting with this rim light control here in the uh, in the hair material properties. For instance, you can control how intense it is, what color it is, the width of it, and uh, with the rim light spread, how far into the hair it permeates. You can see that, um, for example, if I make it uh, spread to 80%, you see that the all the hair is turning orange, but if I limit the spread to 10%, then we only really get the orangey color at the very top. So um, we've got quite a lot of fine control on how the shader reacts to backlighting, which is really nice, and we don't have this with the fur material. The next control in the hair material is called glints. Now, I've actually set the glint frequency to zero in these tests because that essentially disables it. It defaults to 0 0.1, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-enable it at the default value and do a test render so you can see what it does. And here is the render with added glints. And if I compare it to the previous hair render, you can see that what the glint setting does is it adds these very bright highlights uh, on the tips of the hairs. Um, but I find them a little over bright and also they can flicker when scenes are animated. So I tend to just disable them. Um, it's just one less thing to worry about. And I quite like the look of the shader without the glints anyway. Now, if I just go to the advanced settings of the hair material, there's a couple of things I'd like to look at. Where it says global illumination, the default is to set it to both, which means that it both receives uh, GI rays and also contributes to the GI calculations. But you can set it to just receive rather than also uh, add some bounce light because you'll probably find that the bounce light coming from your hair doesn't really add much to the character of the scene. So with it set to just receive, I'm going to do a test render so we can see what it looks like. And here is the render, and it's come in at 3 minutes and 16 seconds. And if we compare that to an earlier render, you can see we've saved quite a lot of time because the earlier render took 3 minutes and 51 seconds. So we are shaving off quite a bit of time with this optimization. The other thing to look at is you can actually set the uh, GI rays for the hair explicitly here. It defaults to 64, which is quite a low value. But the reason for this is the hair is quite slow to render. So you really only want to increase this if you really have to, because it will considerably slow down your render times. So by optimizing the shader to only receive indirect lighting, we can see that our render times are now much closer to what we were getting using fur. This is fur using two passes, and it came in at three minutes, one second. And this is hair using one pass, but limiting the GI to only receive. And it's three minutes, 16 seconds, only 10 seconds slower, but with all the benefits we get from using the hair shader. So I would say in this case, it's definitely worth it. Now, if I compare it to the previous render using hair that had both cast and received GI, you can see that visually the only difference is the latest render is a little bit darker, but I don't think that's too high a price to pay for the big decrease in render time that we've had. Now you can actually completely disable GI from uh, the hair shader by setting it to none, but that will really flatten your lighting and I don't think it's worth doing.